Odd Code 2.0 just launched and it's packed with features that make AI coding faster and more fun. It runs on the new Sonnet 4.5 model, which right now is the best AI coding model there is. In this video, I'll go through the six top features of Claude Code and see how they make building this simple receipt tracking application faster and easier. Let's go. In the initial version of Claude Code, you had to always use the terminal, which a lot of people found was overwhelming. But now in Claude Code 2, you have this VS Code extension, which gives you a really easy visual way to build with. To install it inside VS Code, just look for the Claude Code for VS Code extension. And once you install that, an icon will show up where you can just launch Claude Code. First thing you need to do is do a forward slash login command. And this is going to allow you to put in your Claude subscription. You can also put in an API key for pay as you go. But usually you'll find that the Claude subscription will give you a lot more value in terms of how much usage you can use per dollar. Now that I've got my Claude Code linked with my Claude account, I'm going to start my initial prompt saying create a baseline Next.js application set up with Shad CN for the UI components. Keep it minimal and production ready. I'll provide feature requirements later. And usually the first thing Cloud Code will do is create a to-do list so you can follow along with all the steps it's completing as it goes. And because we have it set up so it asks us when it does make updates to files, it shows us exactly what changes it's making and we can actually approve them from here. So in this case, it's showing us that it's removing the line for config options here and actually adding the config options. So at this point, we can just do the check mark up here and actually accept that change. When you get more comfortable with Claude code and you trust its edits, you can actually down here toggle between ask before edits and switch that over to edit automatically. Then after a few minutes, Claude code has gone through all the items in the checklist, check them all off, and then give us a nice little summary of exactly what it did to build this nice minimal Next.js application. So now we're ready to actually build on top of this and build our actual application. Like a lot of things in life, a little bit of planning goes a long way. It's no different for AI coding and Claude Code gives a built-in feature that really helps with this. So back in the Claude Code extension, if you do a shift tab, it switches to plan mode. And what that means is in this mode, Claude Code is not gonna do any coding. It's just gonna do planning. Now we're gonna describe the application we actually wanna build. So we're gonna say we want a receipt tracking application and then give it some of the requirements around it. So we wanna be able to upload and take photos of receipts. We wanna be able to extract the date, the vendor, the total, we want categorizing expenses. We wanna be able to view the receipts in a clean dashboard with filters and search. And now let's come back with the implementation plan and how it's actually gonna build it. It starts with an architecture overview, it has implementation steps, even things like data models, type definitions, state management, data layer, all those kind of things you need to think about before you start actually coding. That's why I recommend always using plan mode before you do a new application or a major feature. And then when you're totally happy with the plan it's come up with, you can just do a shift tab again and just say build the plan. And it's gonna build it in a much more comprehensive way than if you just put that prompt in there and let it go off coding. So if you're just getting started, that VS Code extension works great. It can do most things. But now that I'm gonna show some more power features, I'm gonna switch over to the Claude Code terminal. And once you have it installed, all you have to do is just type in Claude in a, in a terminal in your application. That's gonna launch right in that application. I mean, keep going just like we did in the extension. Now that Claude Code has built the initial version of our application, I actually just wanna see it. And so normally what I do is just start up a dev server on my local machine. But there's a better way to do it with Claude Code and the new background tasks feature. So I'm gonna say run the dev server and give me back the link. Now, if we look in our status bar, we have this new one below. It says one background task. And then it gives us the link to our local server. Let's check that out. This looks like a nice basic start. So it has an upload receipt button here. I upload image of receipt. The data it gives me is just made up. It's just mock data, but I can save it. It gives me this nice little thumbnail of the receipt. And I think about running it this way. If I do use the down arrow key, I can get into the background tasks. Now I can see that npm run dev. If I look in there, I can see all the actions I've taken. And if there is an error that happens on the server side, it's automatically loaded in the context of this chat. So I can just fix it easily from in here. It's not just running dev servers. I can do all kinds of things. Like I can check for linting errors in the background. I can run tests in the background. I can even do builds in the background and let Claude manage those background tasks. So we wanna always give Claude code more information and more tools and abilities. And the best way to do that is to use the MCP features inside Claude Code. And an MCP server I love to use and it's so useful is called Playwright. So you can just install it by saying Claude MCP add Playwright NPX and then give it the Playwright repository. And what Playwright MCP does is it gives Claude Code tools to control a browser. So this is very useful. So let's start with a browser in it. What this will do is load that MCP server and then launch a browser. And I can see that coming up here. And I can see it opens that now and just puts in a blank page. 
That's great, we know the MCP is working. Now I can combine the last feature of the background tasks with this, and I can say start a dev server in the background and then test uploading a receipt. And then I'm gonna put a sample receipt in the test input folder. So now if I go to that Chrome browser and open, it's automatically doing all this for me. So it's going away, you can make it do testing, you can make it actually check to make sure all your functions are working correctly. You can take screenshots and bring them back into Cloud Code so it can update the UI. All kinds of things you can do with Playwright MCP. Then in the end, it gives you a nice summary of everything it did, all the tests it ran, and then what the dashboard is showing now. You can also actually use this to check the console on the browser. So what MCP really allows you to do is to make Cloud Code more autonomous. So I'll say this application is very boring looking. Use Playwright to iterate the UI to make it more interesting and hip. So now Cloud Code will have access to Playwright so it can take screenshots as it goes through and makes the application more interesting. One piece of advice I would give you though is just have a limited number of MCPs that you actually find useful. Don't load up too many. It can cause some confusion for Cloud Code. Okay, so this application is starting to come together nicely. But as we've been building it, the context of this conversation has grown bigger and bigger, as well as my code base has gotten bigger and bigger with more files. So it's at this point we want to use the init command. And what that does is creates a claude.md file. And this is going to be a special file because what it's going to do is look at the whole application, analyze it, and put together a the Cloud MD file. What's special about that Cloud MD file, that's gonna be loaded into every conversation you have going forward with this project. So if you're in the terminal here and you start a new conversation, it's gonna load that. If you're in the VS Code extension, it'll load that too. And if we look at that Cloud MD file it generates, it's gonna give you things like the development commands. So how to start a dev server, how to do a production build, code quality with linting. More importantly, it's gonna give you an architectural overview. So for example, state management patterns. If I have to update this application later and have a new conversation going, all this information is gonna be really valuable for Cloud Code to go right to the right location to do an update. So I'd recommend running that init command after every major architectural update you do to your application. As good as Cloud Code is, it's not perfect. And from time to time, it's gonna lead you down the wrong path, maybe because your prompt was too vague or just interpreted it incorrectly. There's a new feature out that makes when this happens so much easier to deal with now. In this case, I asked Cloud Code to do something, but my request was too vague and it didn't do it correctly. So if you do a forward slash rewind, now it's gonna go through and show you all the different checkpoints where it did updates. All I have to do is just go up to the one where, that you want undone. And now you can restore the code and the conversation which will bring everything back to that checkpoint. You can just do the conversation or you can just do the code. Most of the time you're gonna to wanna to do this first one. And then instantly it brings you right back to that location. For example, it made a .env.local file, now it's crossed out because it actually deleted that file because that was part of this prompt. It was an instant rewind back to the point everything was good before you hit enter on this prompt. Definitely be aware of the rewind feature. It'll save you a ton of time. Now that I was able to rewind that bad prompt and re redo it properly, Let's see if everything works now. So if I go upload receipt, I'll upload a restaurant receipt from Joe's Diner. It's extracting the data. And look at that, it actually works. It got the vendor name, the date, and even the total. And if I load it in here, now it's got a nice thumbnail. I can go in, see the original receipt. It's all tracked nicely for me. Now we're in a great spot to take this version of the application and deploy it up to DigitalOcean. Let me know in the comments if you're using Claude Code yet. And if you are, is there any features you think I missed? Thanks so much for watching. My name is Ben. You've been watching DigitalOcean. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'll talk to you in the next one.